So many questions I must ask myself today. I wonder if Jesus thinks that I've done my share. Will I wake up in the morning to find regrets upon my mind, Lord? Will I leave a trace of my Jesus somewhere? So many questions I must ask myself today. What will I leave behind when this life has passed my way? Will the people remember his name or forget us all the same? Oh, yeah. Will I leave a trace of my Jesus somewhere? Have I been a light in dark places? brought a smile on sad faces did I show this old world how much it really cares oh, have I lived my life the way he wants me to each and every day when someone stumbled was I there have I been a light in dark places? So oh, brought a smile to sad faces. Did I show this old world how much he really cared? Oh, have I lived my life the way he wanted me to each and every day? When someone stumbled, was I there? Have I been a light in dark places? Brought a smile to sad faces. Did I show this old world how much he really cared? Oh, did I live my life the way? wanted me to each and every day when someone stumbled was I then Ooh. Ooh, yeah. so many questions I must ask myself today So many questions I must ask myself this day So many questions I must ask myself today Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but uh, questions keep crossing my mind. When I look at the media today and uh, I go online and read the equivalent of what would be for us many years ago, the newspaper, social media, all the things that they're saying to us. The world is in a tailspin. Hallelujah. But I got good news for you. God's in charge. Hallelujah. He just wants us to get in control. And uh, I wonder sometimes, what is it going to take for us to realize that uh, he is in charge? And he really does want us to get this situation in control. And uh, the only way we're going to be able to do that is really to submit to him, surrender to him, and say yes to his will. It's such a difficult thing sometimes to get people to understand a simple solution to the most complicated problem is just obedience to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I've discovered that, that uh, the safest place in the whole world is in the wheel of God. Well, we want to welcome you to Inside the Kingdom tonight, uh, Kingdom Clarity. Praise God. We want to bring some 
kingdom truths to you in a, in a uh, really simple way tonight so that you'll get a better understanding of what the kingdom connection is and what God wants us to do about it. Amen. And how, we want, how he wants to work in concert with us, in tandem with us, to get his kingdom come, get his kingdom come so his will can be done on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about uh, God using you and I. We're on his team. Hallelujah. Again, the safest place in the whole world is in the will of God. And if you're not there, prayerfully, by the time we finish this evening, we'll show you how to get there. Amen. Let's make this confession, this profession over the word of God. Say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. It is the definer of my design, the presenter of my purpose, and the director of my destiny. It is the source of the creative faith that is necessary for me to the success that I've been ordained to realize. It is the voice of God speaking to my spirit, commanding my soul, and controlling my body for a kingdom lifestyle and world dominion. It turns the problems of my life into doors of opportunity where increase, advancement, and success wait for me on the other side. I will make it my highest priority to be present and on time when the Lord has summoned me to come and hear my grace gift present character transforming truths that challenge me to rise to excellence, deny mediocrity, and embrace the changes that guarantee my prosperity through faith because I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, you've heard the tenor of our words encased in this profession, and I am convinced, sir, that on the basis of what we said, you will show us what we need to see about your person, your presence, your power, and your kingdom and our purpose in it. You will show us what we need to see relative to this. You will reveal to us what is relevant. Teach us what's true. Seal it with simplicity. Help me say it successfully and bring security to every believer that will hear and obey it. Hallelujah. Because the spirit of the Lord God Almighty is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal broken hearts, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's dig into this this evening. Let me give a shout out to those of you that are with us this evening. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you're with us. Hallelujah. In, uh, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Amen, Aaron. Amen. You know, I, I'm excited to be able to say that and, and not just be a faith statement. It is faith, of course. Everything that we do is faith. But to know that those bodies are there. Hallelujah. Pastor they ran his wife in that wonderful church out there. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. And, and down in uh, Tennessee, Clarksville, Tennessee. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Down in Pensacola, Florida, via yeah. Texas. They're still on the move down there in Texas. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. And Evansville, Indiana. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus is Lord in Chesapeake, Virginia. Praise yeah. God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be announcing another place uh, just as soon as we get the clearance to, to go ahead. Another pastor wants to, wants to become a part of what we're doing here. And uh, what we was with some pastors yesterday, some really humble guys. It was a powerful meeting. I told Pastor uh, Peyton, man, you're doing an incredible job bringing pastors together. That, that's not a small assignment. <laughs> Praise God. And they want to connect with us and uh, uh, just want to see if, how we can help them and, and pour into them. So there'll be some more pastors that'll be joining us and coming on board. And we're so thankful for that. Amen. Hallelujah. After all, that is our apostolic assignment. I love pastors. I want to be, I want you to know that I'm a pastor friend. Praise God. I want to help you succeed and be everything God wants you to be. So Pastor Peyton, keep it up. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was in prayer and uh, Holy Spirit spoke this to me. You know, we're living in a critical time. This, this, this time right now is, is critical and pivotal. Did you hear me? Critical and pivotal. It's pivotal for, pivotal for the church. We're in, a, we're in a position right now. We can, we can pivot and we can take charge. Man. You know what I'm saying? We, we, can, we can take over. Or we can sit back and watch this thing go to, go to blazes in a handbasket and just try to figure out what happened. I'm not one of those kind of guys. We got the ball in our hand. Let's make it happen. Praise God. The world needs Jesus. Darkness is everywhere. And we just got to get this light to them. 
Hallelujah. So as many of you that will work with us to get that done, God bless you. Thank you, those of you that are on itk2.com. Hallelujah. You've been there now over 16 years. And so God bless you. We thank you. Social media, praise God. I believe that we, we made contact finally with, with uh, YouTube. So we're going to be broadcasting there. Hallelujah. And there's another social media outlet that uh, just is, uh, loaded up on, uh, on, on the uh, iPad for so, so we can get some information out there. Twitter, hallelujah. And of course, Facebook Live. God bless you. God bless you. And those of you that are with us by Facebook Live tonight, do me a solid. Send up a heart. Praise God. Yeah, send those stars up. <laughs> God, God bless y'all. Hallelujah. Hit the like button and the share button. Loving the integrity of kingdom excellence, showing heaven's authority and righteousness in this earth. Praise God. Come on board with us. Hallelujah. We promise to do you good. And, and by the way, if you're using your tablet, get on your phone and, and tell your friends what's happening or hit that share button with them so that they're, they'll know what's going on. Let's don't get uh, weary in our well-doing here. We got to just keep this thing moving. Amen. We want to get to as many uh, outlets as we can. And by the way, our uh, ministry minute is, is being launched on, t on Total Christian Television. Praise God. So but watch it and be, watch out for it. It's coming. They told me they were excited about it. We're going to get about, I don't know, 20 or 30 more over there to them. And uh, they'll be aired per periodically throughout the day. Amen. Hallelujah. So you want to, you want to, you know what? We're going to reach a million people. Praise God. It's done in the name of Jesus. So I was, uh, I was praying, and I believe the Holy Spirit said this to me. Our, uh, our, our principle today, and this is kingdom clarity. I want to help clarify some things. Darkened fish was, was our, our principle today. Can you imagine darkened fish? Uh, the, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, uh, grilled fish, praise God. <laughs> Blackened fish with, you know, with the Cajun sauce on it on a bed of rice. No, I'm not talking about that. It's, it's, this is a situation that's deep. Darkened fish require kingdom masters. Can you say darkened fish requires kingdom masters? Now, what is that? What does that mean? What does that mean? Warning, what you're about to hear will be hazardous to your carnality. The eternal high council has determined a continued exposure to these kingdom truths will create in you a kingdom nature and destroy the self-life. Uh, let me share a couple of scriptures with you so we can just put this thing in some context, maybe. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Very powerful passage. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Hear this. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What is he? What does that mean? Here's what Jesus said. Now listen, if you will walk with me, I will give you a passion for people. If you walk with me, I'll give you a desire for the destiny of humans. If you will walk with me, I will give you a compassion for the children of men. If you walk with me, I'm going to turn something on the inside of you, hallelujah, where humanity is concerned that you won't be able to turn off. I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to develop this thing on the inside of you. I like what Mark said about the same verse. He put just a twist on it. And hear this, Mark chapter 1, verse 17 and verse 18. And Jesus said unto them, come you after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Are you with me? So there's a process involved. Of, if you and I are going to get hot for people, there's something that God's got to do on the inside of us. And now listen to verse 18. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Can I talk to the body of Christ tonight? particularly those of you that are under our umbrella, whether it's apostolic, your church, your congregation, or even just the members here in our ministry. Can I touch your heart just a little bit? We don't want to become so cold and weary in our world doing that, that what we do is so, you know, so comfortable with us and so old hat to us. Well, pastor's on us Friday, pastor's on us Wednesday, pastor's on us Sunday. Listen, listen, you, you don't understand. We're not doing this because I ain't got nothing else to do. Are you with me? And I'm not asking you to join with me because you don't have anything else to do. There's nothing more important on the planet right now than for us to understand that God is developing us to become fishers of men. He is developing a passion for people on the inside of us, a compassion for children of men. You, you listen to me. There is a desire that has to grow on the inside of us for the destiny of, of, of people that nothing can ever put out again. I got, I got news today. Thank you, Tamiko, that a 
good friend of mine, evangelist Tyrone Sweeney, is in the hospital in intensive care. I reached out to his niece, and uh, it's, uh, he, got, he got attacked. Uh, hallelujah. And, and we want to pray and, and believe God for his total, complete recovery. Are you with me? So the devil is trying to take out warriors, people on the front line. He, he, he's, he doesn't play fair. He's mean. He's nasty. He, he hates you. He hates you. And, and listen, body of Christ, if we can't get anything out of what I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you tonight, to know that there's an enemy of humankind. There's an enemy of human kindness. There's an enemy of the destiny of men. And we have got to get men to understand that working with him is fatal and sometimes final. Are you hearing me? So we got to wake them up. We got to wake them up. So let me read Mark one more time to you. Mark chapter 1, verse 17, verse 18. Jesus said unto them, come you after me, come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. I'm going to show you how to catch men for the kingdom. I'm going to show you what bait to use. I'm going to show you how to put this thing together so that what you're doing can be attractive to thousands. Are you with me? Are you hearing me? Don't you want to help God evangelize the world? Don't you want to help heaven rescue humanity? I do. I'm not, I'm not satisfied with the foolishness that I'm saying. Verse 18, and straightway. Now, here's, here's how this is going to happen. Here's how it's going to happen. Straightway, they forsook their nets. They forsook their nets and what? Followed him. I wonder now. Now, you, you, you might say to me, well, well, Pastor, I really want to be able to catch a man. Well, are you willing to forsake, forsake this world to go get man? Are you willing? Or do you want to hold on the world and go get man? You can't do both of them. Well, what do you mean forsake the world, let it go? You mean walk away from my house, move out on, on a farm and we become this big uh, communal family? No, I'm not talking about that. He's not saying come out of the world. Are you with me? He said, don't let this world get in you. We are not of the world. We're in the world. We go to work. We cut our grass. We go to the store. You, you with me? We go to college. We do all those things. But we do that with respect to the fact, the truth that God has given us light and grace. That we're not just holding empty, you know, filling space here. We're not just walking around this planet like we don't have anything better to do, just enjoying Disney World, Cedar Point. And you know, I just, now listen, hear me real good. There's nothing wrong with, with, uh, with some human recreation and all. I'm not talking, I'm not against that. So please don't read anything into what I'm saying, but what I'm telling you, even in our recreation moments, even in that R&R &R time, there's darkness all around us. There are people that are desperate. They need hope. You're sitting out there on the beach with your sombrero on and, you know, getting your tan and tuning. But the, you have no idea the people just uh, a couple of uh, umbrellas over, over from you are, are, are thinking about a divorce. There's a husband that's thinking about suicide. There's some children on that beach that, uh, whose parents have abandoned them. I'm not, I'm not saying you got to go out there and look for this. You don't have to look for it. It'll find you. It will find you. Now, when you're found in that situation, don't say, I'm on vacation. <laughs> you hearing me? Don't do that because they, while they're on vacation, can't enjoy it because there's so much misery in them. Are you hearing me? I was telling Becky today, Becky, get some rest. I'm not in opposition to rest. I rest. Praise God. I, 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 you need to rest when you need to rest. But don't get arrested in your rest from your responsibility. Because there are some things that have to be done. People need the Lord. And you might be the only Jesus that they'll ever see. So Lord, help me. Help me become a fisher of men. Show me. Develop this thing on the inside of me so that I'm no longer controlling it. In Luke chapter 5, verse 10 through verse 11. Is this making any sense to you? I really want to help you today. I want to help you to get a heart for hurting humanity. Get a heart for them. Praise God. And so, in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, and so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Wow. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and what? Followed him. They forsook all and followed him. Jesus said, don't, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it, guys. You didn't do too good today. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. From this moment forward, I'm going to show you how to catch men. Hallelujah. Just relax. Chill. 
I got this. I got you, baby. Just hold on to me. I'm, I'm going to make your fishing so productive. And I'm, you're going to bring such a catch in. Praise God. That you're going to be supplied for the rest of your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20 to verse 22, hear this. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ. Did you hear that? That's so powerful. I wish I had time to really teach that. Those, some of my brothers in the faith are really turning toward Judaism and taking on the rudiments and all that. I just want to warn you about that. Don't get caught up in that. See, don't get caught up in that. Jesus, there was no greater Jew on the planet than Jesus and the apostle Paul. And they're telling us right here in this verse, look at this. Paul said, I'm open. My ministry was to the Gentiles, notwithstanding my my natural biological heritage. My ministry was to the Gentiles. I came to seek and save them that are lost, the lost sheep of the, of the house of Israel. Are you hearing me? And so Paul, with his Jewish self, with all of his pedigree and everything that he learned, he said, I count everything but lost that I may gain the excellency. Now hear this, the excellency of Christ, not the Mosaic law, the excellency of Christ. Now, Thank God for our Jewish brothers who can bring us a wealth of history and a wealth of information but by, by their own biology that you and I wouldn't know. So thank God that they can give us the meaning and the purpose of our worship. And they can take us back to the Hebrew law, the culture, the letter of that thing. And we can get a better understanding of it. But we don't pursue the letter of the law, but the spirit, the spirit of that letter, the spirit of that law, which is Jesus. He's the fulfillment of that thing. Are you hearing me? Even the Jews have got to accept Jesus. I know that that bothers you, praise God, but they do. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Save the name Jesus. And so I know that there are people that are challenged by that, and I'm not trying to challenge you. I just want you to understand something. Jesus is the reason for every one of my seasons. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at this again. Let's look at this. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew. I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. And then he further states to that Jewish crown and to them that are under the law is under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. I respect the law. I understand the law. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm so committed to God, getting God to you, I will comply with some things that are customarily fit for you to get you to see Jesus. That's, what, that's, that's all he's saying here. Now look at verse 21. To them that are without the law, as without the law, not being without, without law to God. Paul said, I'm not an outlaw, praise God. I, I'm not outside of the wishes of God when I get with these Gentiles. I'm just not going to practice Judaism with the Gentiles. I'm going to give them Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Hallelujah. But under the law of Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak, I became as weak. He said, I wasn't weak. I, I'm not confessing weakness. I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things, hear this, I am made all things to all men that, that I might by all means save some. Now, Paul was, was really gifted, and he knew that he wasn't going to save everybody. Are you with me? And if you think you're going to save the whole world by yourself, you have been misguided and misled. You're in a delusion. You ain't going to do that by yourself. You're going to need me, and I'm going to need you. So we're going to save some. I'm going to save some. You're going to save some. We're going, they're going to save some. We're all going to save some. And when we get through with our sum, the sum will be the total. Are you with me? We work together. Things work so much better when we work together. Holy Spirit said this to me. I want, I want you to hear this. This is so powerful and provocative. Jesus said he would make his disciples fishers of men. Now hear this. Unfortunately, we're seeing darkened fish. Everywhere, those who have become kingdom masters will have to garner this kingdom harvest. Did you hear that? Let me say it one more time. The Holy Spirit spoke this to me. It was so profound, I believe he did. You judge it. You judge whether or not it is. Jesus said he would make his disciples fishers of men. Unfortunately, we're seeing darkened fish everywhere. Those who have become kingdom masters will have to garner this kingdom harvest. Who are the kingdom masters? 
Those who will become all things to all men. Those who are willing to leave all and follow Jesus and learn how to catch men. Those who will allow God to develop them to become fishers of men. These are the kingdom masters. I just want to ask you a question tonight. Are you a kingdom master? Are you an aspiring kingdom master? Are you just satisfied with your church and you just kind of love the way you worship and you don't really want a whole lot of people in there because you just love where you sit? Praise God. Hallelujah. Heaven is saying, boy, you've really missed it. You've misunderstood. All that the Holy Ghost came into you and all that word that he's pouring into you, you it's just not for you. Of course, it's benefiting you. Yes, you're no longer in darkness. Your life is so much more richer because of that. But you're not in heaven. You're still on the earth. Jesus wants others to benefit the same way you did. Share that wealth with them. Talk to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Reveal Hallelujah, the excellence of who he is. They're waiting on it because, listen, hear me real good. Some of you, you are the only Jesus that people will ever see. You've got to let your light shine. Are you with me? Praise God. All right, what are darkened fish? What are darkened fish? Darkened fish are the fallen individuals seduced by hell. Did you hear that? Fallen individuals, fallen humanity, individuals, mankind, Man, woman, boys, men, women, boys, and girls. Fallen individuals seduced by hell. Darkened fish are those who have suffered. Now hear this. They have suffered a disconnection from their divine father. Mm. Through deception, disappointment, and disillusion. Now experiencing a spiritual death or complete separation, therefore incapable of expanding and advancing the kingdom of God, nor experiencing the enjoyment of a kingdom lifestyle. Can I walk you through that one more time? How do I know if I'm a darkened fish? Are you suffering from any one of these symptoms? Are all those who have suffered disconnection from their divine father, are you still connected to God? Do you know you are? Can you sense his presence? Do you check in with him? Do you commune with him? You have fellowship with him on a daily basis. Then if you are doing those things, then you are not a darkened fish. You are not disconnected. On the other hand, if you are not doing those things, then you are disconnected and you are a darkened fish. Through deception, disappointment, who hasn't been disappointed and even deceived sometimes? How many of us have not, hallelujah, been victimized by this? But we don't live in the deception. We don't live in the disappointment. We rise, praise God, through deception, disappointment, and disillusion. Now experiencing a spiritual death. Wow. I don't, I, can I, <laughs> listen to me tell you, I don't even know what that would feel like. I got so much life of God on the inside of me, I don't even know what spiritual death would feel like. I have no desire to, to see what it would feel like. In him we live and we move and we have our being. In him was life and that life was the light of men. I've got eternal life coursing through every part of my being and ain't trying to get it out. Praise God. Are you hearing me at all? So if you're alive to righteousness, then you will stop sinning. You will stop being a darkened fish. Praise God. Now there's some characteristics of this darkened fish. Decreased, reduced, diminished, weakened, disconnected, detached. I don't ever sense those things. Uh, you know, I don't know when the last time I felt that uh, uh, I was disconnected from God. Yeah, I've been connected with God over 50 years. And I'm telling you, there's not a day that I wake up that I think, well, I better get in contact with God. I better get connected. I get up thanking God for the connection. Praise God. Are you hearing me? Now, I'm not arrogant. I'm not, I'm not telling you that I have this perfect day every day of my life. Everything is in place. Not a hair out of place. Not a care. Not, not nothing to be concerned about. No. No. But these things don't determine my connection. Are you with me? And I, I, look, can I share something with you? I believe that the greatest challenges that I have is because I'm connected. The enemy wants to break my connection. Wants to pull me away uh, off square. And you may be experiencing the same thing I am. Don't let nobody deceive you, delude you into thinking that you are not connected. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. 
Sometimes when we go out on an evangelistic uh, excursion, we just throw out there and we just throw the net out there. Are you with me? And we're just catching all kind of stuff. And we bring it back and we got to clean it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 48, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels and cast the bad, bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Does that bother you? It does me. I don't want anybody to leave the planet going in the darkness. If, if this, can I say it this way because some of you don't believe it. If this is true, would you wish this on anybody? If it's true. I happen to believe, believe that it is. And so I don't have to say if. if. Since it's true, I don't want to wish this on anybody. I want to do everything I can to get you away from that abyss, that everlasting state of darkness and torment, torture, hell, hallelujah. I, I don't want you to leave this planet uncertain when you can know, praise God. I want to help you know, hallelujah. As, as therefore the tares are gathered into the burn and, and, burn, and gathered and burned in the fire, so shall be so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that are thin and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be a wailing and a gnashing of teeth. Did you hear me? A well, eternal wailing. Can you imagine being in agony and there's no relief, no remedy? Have you ever been there? You know, I, by the way, I discovered, I went to the podiatrist, my toe was actually broke. Hallelujah. I guess they're practicing medicine, right? Uh, the, the original x-ray came back. There's nothing wrong. Everything is fine. We continue on. And so I tried continuing on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tried to put on some shoes. And I'm telling my foot, they said, there's nothing wrong with you. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Praise God. And so finally I called the doctor and said, man, look, I need to go to see a podiatrist because I, I don't know. You know, you guys said that everything is fine. And I, you know, I'm a man of faith. I want to stand on the authority of the word of God. But I got a mountain here and I want it moved. Praise God. Jesus said, speak to the mountain. Don't act like the mountain ain't there. Something is wrong. So I went in there and the, the, the doctor came in. She was so pleasant. She said, well, your toe is broke. I said, no, they told me it wasn't broke. She said, well, here, here's the x-ray. It's broke. She said, well, but, but not to worry, not to be concerned. It's healing right good. <laughs> you ought to be all right by the end of the summer. I said, oh, no, praise God. Now, you know, that was a, 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 an interesting challenge, but it gave me comfort. I know now, you know, so I can speak to that joint now. Be mended, be made whole, send you a bone, come back together in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Sometimes when you don't know what's going on, that's, that's when it can be most devastating. And disturbing you people telling you ain't nothing wrong and you know something's wrong praise god <laughs> hallelujah so i stand on the authority of the word and thank you all for praying with me and getting an agreement with me i found out what's going on now i know how to target my faith praise god i stand on the authority of the word of god glory to god hallelujah so now i brought that up to say this that was a minor degree of anguish uh you never had a broken toe maybe you don't know i'm saying minor it was really painful it was excruciating. Hallelujah. I could imagine being in that kind of condition forever. Forever. No, no, no. And what I'm talking about, what Jesus is talking about in hell, is probably a million times worse than that. You, you, there was times I could get up in the morning, I didn't even want to walk. I didn't want to get out of the bed. Because hitting the floor, that thing was throbbing. and The toe was swelling. It kept getting bigger and bigger. It started turning uh, purple. I said, my God, you a liar, Satan. And they said, there's nothing wrong with you. Stop looking like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Jesus is Lord. So imagine now being in the worst state in your life forever. No relief, no reprieve. You are doomed. My God, that's what hell is like. That's what that place is like. You don't want to go there. Amen. Amen? So help me go get these darkened fish. Help Jesus. Help heaven. Help yourself. Help each other. Let's get up 
and be about our Father's business. When you have mastered, now hear this, Holy Spirit spoke this to me. When you have mastered kingdom ability, you now have the kingdom power to accept kingdom responsibility and to embrace a kingdom opportunity. There's no greater kingdom opportunity than to go and get somebody that don't know Jesus. There's no greater kingdom opportunity than to help somebody who's lost become found. There's no greater opportunity to, to rescue somebody taken captive by the devil at their will, at his will, and, you know, swallowed up in misery and depression to get them to see the light. There's no greater kingdom opportunity than that. So hear this one more time. When you have mastered kingdom ability, you now have the kingdom power to accept kingdom responsibility and embrace a kingdom opportunity. What is a kingdom master? Remember the subject, we're, we're about ready to wrap up. Remember the subject now. Darkened fish required kingdom masters. Somebody that has willing to, is willing to become all things to all men, and some may be converted. Hear what a kingdom master is. A kingdom master is one who has matured in assignment success. Matured in assignment success. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean he, he never makes any more mistakes? Uh, he's flawless? No, no. That means that when he does error, or she does error, or they err, they're willing to quickly admit they error. Are you with me? We're mature. We've grown up. Our emotions no longer control our behavior. Are you with me? We get our emotions in line, hallelujah, with new behavior patterns. Praise God. Is this making any sense to you? Hallelujah. So kingdom masters is one who has matured in assignment success, trust, execution, and responsibility. Well, who's the kingdom master? One who has the ability, the skills, the tools, and the techniques. Are you with me? Has that ability, praise God, and they can respond with that level of ability. Skills, tools, and techniques. I know what it feels to be lost because I was lost. I know what it feels to be broken because I was broken. I know the anguish and the agony of defeat because I was defeated. And so I can go to you now having overcome that by the grace of God and hallelujah, have compassion for you and your need and bring you the relief that you need instead of criticizing you for the condition that you found yourself in. Now, these are people sometimes that are in the body, not just sinners, not people that need God. Sometimes those of us with God can get in that point and that position, and we got to help bring them out as well as, well as bringing those others in. We are our brother's keepers, sisters too. Amen? So a kingdom master is one whose personal growth, hear this, one whose personal growth has allowed the assignment to regulate his or her purpose for greater impact in the expansion and the advancement of the kingdom. I was talking to Pastor Tony Shaw the other day. He was so much on my heart and I reached out to him and we had a wonderful conversation. I hadn't talked to him in a long time, but we had a wonderful conversation and he closed the conversation out. He said this to me. He said, sir, I am so glad you called me and you, you stopped doing what you were doing. I don't take this lightly. He said, can I, I want to share something with you. I said, yeah, go ahead. He said, when I talk to you, I'm discovering something. Your words are intentional. I said, hmm, I'm not sure what that means, but okay. But he went on and said, listen, when you talk, your words are intentional. You are thinking about what you're going to say and you're your, 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 your release of those words have a destiny. They have a purpose and they have a meaning. You are an intentional person. He said, I want you to know that I don't take that lightly. I said, wow, okay, okay. I, I received that. I received that. Now, I, I, I didn't discover that about me. He said that, and I began to think about when I hung the phone up, and I began to think as I'm walking the floor, floor praying for those pastors that I'm connected with in the body of believers here this morning. I was praying for the families here, and I thought, yeah, I am intentional. Jesus was intentional. Are you intentional? Are your, are your words deliberate? Every idle word a man speaks, he shall give an account thereof. I, I, I want to get away from idle words, even if I'm having fun and I'm making you laugh. I'm intentionally doing that. It's not idle. Laughter does good like a medicine. Are you with me? And so we intentionally can be jovial 
and have fun. Praise God. And then we intentionally are serious. Our words have meaning. They have a purpose. We're not just shooting them out and wondering what's going to happen. No, we thought it clearly. This person needs a smile. So let me give them some levity so they can smile. This person needs some compassion. So let me reach into my compassion bag and bring them some aid. Are you with me? That's what a master does. And you can master every possibility in every situation and circumstance. You don't have to be God. Just represent him. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Thank God you're not God. Thank God I ain't either. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are three laws, three laws of the kingdom master. Practiced, experienced. Mm. How do I know when I'm experienced? How much have you practiced? I practice his presence. I, every day, I sit at my piano every day, every day, unless, you know, maybe I'm out of town and I can't be there. I'm on an assignment. I used to have this, I've got this roll up keyboard that I take with me. I used to. I don't take any more. Uh, uh, portable situation and, and, and it helps me, help, help me in my own personal worship time. That, so I, I had my home away from home, if you will. Praise God. But, but every day I'm sitting there. You know what I say? I'm going to practice his presence and the piano. I'm going to practice his presence and the piano. And I said, God, I thank you for the wisdom to play this thing. I thank you for the wisdom that was given to the man who created it. I thank you for the development and the discovery of this thing. I am as free with this thing as the guy who created it, as the guy who discovered it, and the guy who crafted it. Are you with me? And I say that every day and I practice his presence. I say that every day and I practice his presence. And the piano. Becky said to me the other day, Pastor, you're really sounding good. I said, wow. Well, thank you, Becky, because I compliment. Becky is one of the most skilled pianists I've ever heard. Praise God for her to give me that compliment. It tells me that what she's hearing is his presence, not me. Praise God, because I don't want to entertain anybody. I want to show you how to enter in. I want to become all things to all men that some may be converted. So I am intentional. I'm practicing that. I'm getting experienced in practicing his presence. Proficient. My skill set should rise higher and higher, and so should yours and the things that you do, so that God can get glorified, hallelujah, of your activity. Professional. Become an expert at it. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 1. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Mm. So when you've mastered the possibilities, you understand the people that are working with you need to be treated like God is treating you. Are you with me? You need to treat people like God is treating you. Job chapter 31, verse 13. If you did despise the cause of my manservant, or excuse me, if I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant, then they contended with me. What then shall I do when God riseth up? And when he visiteth what I what, I, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? Every time, hear this, masters, every time you are handling and dealing with the people of God, you're dealing with God's creation, the crowning touch of his creation. If you handle people adversely, you are handling God adversely. If you are handling people with disdain, you are handling God with disdain. How you treat people is exactly how God is seeing how you are responding or reacting to him. Are you with me? People are God's greatest commodity in any universe. There's no other planet, no other being that God has put his image in save man, the human family. We are a reflection of our Father. And if you can't see God in somebody, hear this real good. If you can't see God in somebody, then it's your assignment to help him get there. Are you with me? Don't become critical of of the gods you can't see. Get this point in your mind. How can I help get God in this individual? Now, maybe I'm planning. Maybe I'm watering. God will give the increase. I don't have to necessarily see the results immediately when I've touched you. Maybe I'm watering. And maybe I am harvesting right now, but somebody else planted and watered. 
I don't know where I am in the spectrum of that, but I do know this. I can't see God, so I'm going to do my part so a reflection of God can be in your life. Did you get anything out of this at all? Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. I want to pray with you. I pray that you really got the heart of what Father wanted me to share with you in, in this whole uh, darkened uh, fish thing. People have been created in the image of God, and we owe it to heaven to make sure that that image rises. Are you hearing me? God is counting on us. He's counting on us. And it doesn't matter what, what, we, what we're doing. Like today is, it is Friday evening, and this is not a, a, a in-house scheduled meeting, but it is a scheduled meeting. Praise God. We're touching the people that are, are throughout the world. Praise God. And so we thank God for that ability, right? We thank God for that ability to do that. Jesus loves you. He's committed to you. And thank you for giving us the opportunity to share that. I want Jesus to be glorified. I want his life to be touched by my obedience to you. Are you with me? So I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, for the grace that is upon those that are with us today by, we, by way of the stream, social media, and YouTube. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you, hallelujah, for Total Christian Television, who's airing that ministry minute of help. Hallelujah. All the millions of people that will be touched. The impact of our obedience is literally being felt around the world. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. We don't take these moments lightly. Thank you for the people that put a pause in what they're doing today to check in with us. Hallelujah. To make contact in Jesus' name. God, make us better lights than we've ever been. A, a stronger net than we've ever been. Cast us out. We want to drop a full of fish, darkened fish, that we can make light again. In Jesus' name. Help us, sir. Help us realize that we're not just doing something here. We're not just marking, mark, marching in, in, in place, shadow boxing. Father, help us understand and realize that people's lives are being impacted. We're touching them. We're helping them. We're supporting them. We're pouring into them. We're, we're, with, human, with, with kingdom compassion, we are considering their calamities and getting their comfort that they really need. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for helping us do that. We love you, sir. We honor you, and we praise you. Now, as we're praying for those that are lost, Father, hallelujah, let the light shine upon them, Father. Let them see clearly those that are in darkness right now. Let them see clearly, hallelujah, how much you love them, the price Jesus paid, and the sacrifice, Father. They don't have to live like that. They don't have to live under that pressure, that delusion, that deception, that devastation. They've been delivered. Father, help them see it. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We love you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, it's time for you to consider sowing into this ministry and uh, continue to help us touch and reach so many people. My God, hallelujah. I, I, when I think about what we're doing here from this humble place called Flint, Michigan, the hundreds and thousands of people that have been touched down through the years and are continually being touched. It's all because of heaven, hallelujah, God, delivering us and saving us, and people like you, giving your time, your talent, and your treasure. Praise God. Thank you for considering this fertile soil. If you want to re release an offering this evening, you can do that. Hallelujah. You, you, you may want to do it electronically. Praise God. And, and you can do that on itk2.com, right on our webpage. Hit the donate, donate button and follow the instructions. Or you might want to do it uh, through the Givelify app, that, which, which is the one that we've adopted for our house. If you don't have that, you can go to the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, and download it, praise God, and then, and then put in our address when, the, when you get the app downloaded, uh, Kingdom of Heaven Ministries, 2430 Dutcher Road, the one with the sword and the shields, that's us. Praise God, fill out the information, and you're, and you're in contact with us, ready to go. Hallelujah. Indicate on there. Uh, where you want that seed to go, we will honor that to the best of our ability to make sure it gets there. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, glory to God. And, uh, and, and thirdly, praise God, if maybe you're in the area and you want to bring an offering over. On our north wall, praise God, there's a door with an offering receptacle. Praise God. Get you a sovelope, fill it out, pray over it, 
Indicate on that sofa load where you want that seed to go and what you're believing for. We want to read that and get an agreement with you and pray that the power of God come on that seed that you've sown and the harvest will be yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, there are many of you that have taken the opportunity uh, uh, to, to do the, uh, the cash app thing. Let me explain that to you. We don't talk about it kind of detail like we, we need to sometimes so you, you're not fully understanding what's happening there. In Ezekiel 44, 30, it says, Bring the priest an oblation, an offering, and he will declare a blessing to rest in your house. Now, when I discovered that thing some years ago, I didn't want to do it because I came out of what I considered priest abuse of, of, of the people. And I didn't want to be targeted that way at all. Uh, I saw people suffering and, 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 and preachers flourishing and uh, people not understanding how they could get what they needed by sowing and, 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 and honoring the, their grace gift. Well, we didn't know grace gifts at that point. We just, well, it's just a pastor, the preacher, and we, we didn't understand. And so we had no real, real connection with that. But when the Holy Spirit revealed that to me, and I began to do it, first of all, I began to do it. And I saw the benefit come back to me. I, I could not help but begin to share uh, as God would begin to deliver me and Fran uh, what, what would happen as a result of that. I'm telling you, thousands and thousands of dollars have flowed into our hands where ministry is concerned, where ministry uh, uh, contact is concerned. When I say thousands, I mean literally, literally tens of thousands of dollars because we decided to obey God that way. Now, that's not happening because I'm a preacher. That's happening because I'm a sower. I'm a giver. And I understand my man of God needs to be taken care of too. And so we sow in that regard. And we've seen, I'm telling you, man, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Hallelujah, come through. And what we did, we sold it back. We helped people. We, uh, we, we strengthened folks and, and, and gave them courage and helped pay their car notes, some of them house notes, and, and all, all what we need to do, consumer bills. We, we, we are sowers. He gives seed to the sower. Praise God. And so that Ezekiel 4430 thing was a real powerful situation. If you want to uh, increase your reception, then that's one of the ways you can do it. Ezekiel 4430. And that's Cash App LWB66. Cash App LWB66. Well, how do I get Cash App? Well, you go to the Google Play, Google Play Store, the Apple Store, and you download it. Praise God. Uh, the Ezekiel 4430 connection is Cash App uh, dollar sign LWB66. And wherever I am, when I hear that thing go off, I'm praying for you. I, I believe the men of God that I've sold to were praying for me. And, uh, and to get an agreement with the grace that was on them to come to me. And it has. I'm telling you, more than I ever thought it could, it has. And it still is. Praise God. So I have the grace of Dr. B.T. Stevens. have the grace of Earl and Bobby Moore. I have the grace of Mac Brenda Timberlake. I have the grace of Ivy Hilliard. I have the grace of Dr. Mark and Vicki Barclay. These are the people that I've set under and, and, and received as a covering. So all that, as we sold into them, all that grace came on me. So when you sow here, you're getting the grace of that lineage all coming down to you. Are you with me? And so that's why we put that out there. And you need to understand that that's more than me telling you to give me some money. Praise God. No, no. That's tapping into a powerful principle of God and seeing the return of that thing come back to you. Amen? Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. I declare blessing tangibly rest in your house in Jesus' name. Are you ready to give? All right. We're going to make this bold profession over our, our giving, our prayer. Hallelujah. And believe God that we're getting the return. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. They're pulling that up for me right now. Praise God. In Jesus' name. I think I caught them in the moment of a deep, deep thought in the video center. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, uh, we're going to be back here Sunday evening. Uh, excuse me, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. We're so looking forward to that. And the ladies, women's prayer, women's prayer, Saturday at 11 o'clock. There won't be any men's meeting. We're going to be partnering with the church in the community that's doing something for some young people. Praise God. All right. Say this with me. Father God, 
I thank you for being faithful and giving us seeds to sow, bread for our table, multiplying our seeds sown, and increasing the fruit of our righteousness. Thank you for giving us the grace we need to have all sufficiency on all sides so that we can abound to every good work. We are sowers in the house of God, and because we are, we thank you for commanding men to give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with the same measure we meet is measured back to us again. Thank you also for extending your covenant of the tithe to us. You have opened the windows of heaven, poured out a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it all, personally rebuked to devour for our sake, and caused our fields to be fruitful in their time. And as we give to pastor, according to Ezekiel 4430, a blessing rest in our house, and your daily load us with benefit, so we can start the process over again. Amen. And each one, reach one. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday at 11 o'clock inside the kingdom. Praise God. We